Hello, this is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Today I'm going to be unboxing and kitting up this painting here below my hand. Uh, so I'm just nearing the end of one of my current whips. Whip standing for work in progress. I've got another row or two to go and it's a square painting. So I'm thinking ahead to the next square painting that I want to work on. And I quite often kit up one when I'm nearing the end of another so that I'm all ready to go once I finish with that one. And I don't just have one really long day of kitting down one painting and kitting up the next. So I'm really excited about this painting. This is what I'm going to be working on. Family Circus. Let me bring it up so you can see. So this is a square diamond, diamond painting canvas and kit made by Diamond Art Club, who are a US based uh, diamond art company, who are one of my absolute favourites. I have a lot of their work. They're a high end company. They do cost a little bit more than some other companies, but you really notice it in the quality. This canvas, so it's called Family Circus. The artist is Richard Lorenz. And it's a 70 by 93 centimetre painting. So it is a biggie. This one came out at, I think it was the beginning of April. And it was really, really, really super popular. It sold out, I mean, well within an hour of release time. And I was going to put it on my wish list. I was going to come back and buy it another time and be good and not buy a painting that day. <laughs> And a friend sort of nudged me and was like the devil on my shoulder and encouraged me. But I mean, I can't blame it on her. It was all me. I, I just thought I really wanted it. I didn't want to wait for it to restock, even though I knew this canvas would be restocking at some point in the future. So I managed to buy it just before it sold out. And then I was really, really pleased that I did because it is just so much fun. It's a really fun picture with the little owls. Um, I love all the colours. I think this painting's got 64 colours in it, so it's going to keep me busy. So, let's get this out of the box. Okay, so let's get into this. The reason that I like this painting so much is, well, it's, it's colourful, it's fun. In terms of what I enjoy in a painting, I like a variety of colours and I like lots of different things going on in the painting. So I'm not just I'm painting sort of the same picture over and over again. Um, and also there's six little birds in this family circus, um, which you'll see more when I pan over the canvas later. And I'm one of a family of six. Well, two parents, four kids. So I kind of related to the madness. So, I don't think there's anything left in there. I'm going to struggle to show you the whole canvas all in one go in my work area. So I think what I will do is, is mainly just focus on showing you the other bits now and then I'm gonna pan over the whole canvas before I start kitting up. Let's just have a little peek. Isn't it fun? Okay, you can see some different bits of it as I unroll. So, we've got the little thank you for your purchase and how to diamond paint kit. What's included, a few discount codes, a few links to Facebook groups and that kind of thing. I've got my sticker sheet and I'll show you later on what I do with this. I do use the stickers for my pots, but I'm also going to photocopy this to use as a key when I'm working. I have got million billion drills. <laughs> Look how pretty the colours are. <laughs> and I have got a new toolkit. So, um, if you're familiar with Diamond Art Club, this may or may not look different to you. If you're not familiar with Diamond Art Club, they currently have two kinds of toolkits that they're sending out. They have the older kit, which is perfectly adequate for what you need, but has a little bit less in it. 
and they've got this one. So if you order a painting that's a fairly recent release or a recent restock, you're quite likely to have this one now because it seems to me like th this is coming out most of the time now. And it says on the back what we've got in here. So we've got an applicator and comfort grip. So that just means the pen and grip. Uh, we've got a heart-shaped wax container, a craft tray, a tray stopper, a multi-placer, a uh, cover minder, washi tape, ziplock baggies and tweezers. So let's have a look. Okay. So, pen and grip. The colour will vary depending on what kit you buy. So that will go on there. We've got a little bag of baggies, which is useful when you're de-kitting or if you've got surplus drills that you want to keep aside when you're kitting up. We have two of the nice thin multi-placers. So there's a four placer and a seven placer. That's really handy. These come with all Diamond Art Club kits. So I've got a nice little bag of these and when they wear out, I can reuse them because I personally prefer these thin plastic ones to the steel multi places that you can get so it's really helpful having lots of them this kit has come with the pink ombre tweezers so there's a few different kinds of tweezers out on the moment these ones don't seem to open very far but they'll do the job this i really like so the older kits used to come with two plates of diamond heart-shaped wax Diamond heart shaped? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. These newer kits come in a little pot, so it's really good for keeping the wax fresh. I have some washi tape. Washi tape is really helpful for um, on poured glue kits. You often get a little rim of poured glue around the outside of the canvas, and that can collect bits of fluff and stuff. A lot of people like to cover that with washi tape just to keep the canvas looking fresh and clean. Other people use it um, to cover the, the plastic covering um, and segment it off. So when they've got a big painting like this one to section it off so that they're working in smaller, more manageable areas and they use washi tape to do this. I don't personally actually use it much, but it's still pretty and I admire it. Got a lovely cover minder here. I really like these. So cover minders are um, for holding the plastic cover off your kit. So you're working on the kit, there's a plastic cover that you maybe don't want to cut off entirely because you might want to recover that section if you don't complete it. This, you put the little magnet on the back of your canvas, this on the top, and it holds that plastic cover out of the way. As you can see, it's a nice, strong magnet. And lastly, we've got the tray. There's a couple of different kinds of trays going in these new kits. This looks to be one of the slightly flimsier ones that won't lie entirely flat. Um, it does come with a stopper, which is really helpful. Ooh, if I can get it in. Which I can't. <laughs> okay, that one doesn't seem to fit very well. Um, anyway. They're, these are like really nice things to have. A lot of people will have their own preferred trays that they work with anyway. I certainly do, but these are great. And particularly if this is the first kit you've ever bought, it's going to be really helpful to have all of this stuff in here. Okay, so I've put the toolkit away and I'm about to do a pan over this canvas so I can show you it properly. And I thought it might just be helpful to show you that because Diamond Art Club, along with a lot of other higher quality companies these days, use poured glue, which you can generally tell because there's a clear plastic cover over the painting rather than an opaque one. And they've got this lovely flexible canvas. One thing you can do, which you couldn't do with a double-sided adhesive painting, is roll it backwards. And I'm gonna do that now. Sorry, I'm just struggling because I've not got much space. I'm gonna roll this backwards and it's gonna flatten it out nice and quickly for me. So that in a second, I can do a really good pan over the canvas for you.
Okay, so as I said, the first thing that I like to do is use my printer copier to copy the sticker sheet. And I'm just going to use my paper guillotine here to trim this down, which I haven't copied it straight. So <laughs> it's easier said than done to get that looking neat. really matter of course if it's perfectly straight I just want it to look neat because I'm fussy <laughs> Almost done. Okay. so because I work on an easel and I tend to have just a small amount of the canvas visible to me really at any one time. This is what I use to check the symbols while I'm still getting used to them in the early days of doing a painting. Um, so it's really helpful to be able to look at this when I may have the key that's on the side of the canvas rolled up and not visible to me. I've also just guillotined the sticker sheet in half. So I've kept the sticker to put in my logbook and these are what I'll use for kitting up. So, for my kitting up today, I am going to use this storage box here and these four extra ones. It's a 64 colour kit, so I'm going to try and identify the four colours with the most drills and they will go in these really nice big pots. And the rest will go in one row of this. This is a um, double... What's the word I'm looking for? A double layered storage container. It can take 120 pots, um, but I prefer to just keep one layer to a painting, partly because of my workspace, that's just easier than having to move these around, but also because I could kit up a whole nother kit in the other part of this and then just switch these layers around. So that is what I will be using. So, first thing I need to do really is work out what my four biggest colour drills are. So I'm going to get this out of the packaging and have a quick look at them with you. I will keep this sticker because I'll put that on the envelope that I put any spare drills in that don't fit in my pots. So many drills! <laughs> and there are five ABs in this painting. If you don't know what an AB is, it's an Aurora Borealis drill. I can see one here, so I'll just hold this up to show you. So do you see how that's got an extra coating on? And it really glints and catches the light. So it's got a coating on the top of the drill, like a sort of rainbow effect coating. And that will reflect the light of the drills around it, of any light shining on the painting, and it just adds extra sparkle. Ooh, where to start? So one thing that's quite useful to know with Diamond Art Club is that they do organise these drill packs in order of how big they are. So you will have a strip, which could well be this one, that has all the biggest, fullest drill bags. And then there'll be some little tiddly ones later on. Let's have a look at some of these. So we've got lots of browns and pinks. These are going to be largely those outer sections of the painting, I think. 814 is a common colour. Two bags of this orangey brown. Three bags of this one. And there's that white AB drill we looked at before. This is a really common drill colour in uh, Diamond Art Club's paintings because it's just a sort of a neutral colour, but really rainbow sparkly effect from the AD. Lots of reds. A lot of these are in two packs, which is great because I can hopefully fit one whole pack in my drill pot and then I can just keep a whole other pack unopened in a separate pouch and then I can just refill the drill pot when I need to. Got 
Oh, some lovely purpley colours. How many bags? Four bags of free ten. <laughs> Free tens are notorious for being difficult to work with because for some reason, which I'm, I'm not familiar with the reason behind, manufacturers have often struggled more to create good quality free ten drills. The great thing about Diamond Art Club is they've started to make their own drills recently. And you'll see this more when I open them up. But I don't know how well you can see that, but their free tens are now... There's nothing left to fear. <laughs> They're still really uniform. They're not filled with tabs and holes and awkward sizes like they used to be. So these are no longer anything to fear. These two are very similar. Oh, look at this bright orange. That's lovely. Loads and loads of bags with two bags of the same colour. Well, here's another AB. I don't think I've seen this one before. A lovely sparkly red colour. One thing you'll notice with Diamond Art Club paintings is they have their own DMC code codes that they use for AB drills. So anything under DMC 150 will be an AB with Diamond Art Club. Other companies will do it differently, so that only applies to Diamond Art Club. Oh, I like that colour. That's a really pretty pink with just a hint of purple. That's really nice. A sort of royal, or what would you say an electric blue? Somewhere between a royal and an electric blue. <laughs> Getting on to some smaller ones here, smaller bags of girls. And here is a purple AB. How pretty is that? Just see if I can do a comparison. So it's a, quite a similar colour purple and the AB purple. So you can see the extra glint there. Yeah. Oh, some bigger ones. Bright orange colour. Now we'll get onto the little bibby packs. Although none of these are that small. Wow, that's interesting. Another AB I'm not familiar with. This one I can see is still the old kind of drills. So if you remember when I said that Diamond Art Club started making their own drills that are more uniform, they've been rolling that out gradually over the last few months. So sometimes you'll still get a colour that has the old drills. And you can tell because some of the drills have nine facets on squares, whereas with newer drills, they will all have 13 facets. minty green gosh these colours are just so nice it's going to make it so much fun to work with definitely someone that loves variety of colour and I can get quite bored of a painting if there's not much variety right getting on to the last few well, loads of this lovely canary yellow AB so that's going to be fun. And the last one's there. Okay, so I'm going to go and work out which colours I have the most of to go in my bigger storage pots. <laughs> Excuse me, knocking the paper everywhere. And then I'm going to get on with kitting up. Okay, so what I have done is I have found the four colours that roughly speaking have the most amount of drills and put these aside because they're going to go in my four pots and then I have a big bowl of of drills <laughs> losing track of my words in the excitement wowzers there's a lot this is going to take a while I may have to time lapse bits of this if I'm still here in in hours so before I do that, um, because there's a lot of drills where there's a lot of them and they're in two bags and I'm going to need to keep some aside, I'm just going to prepare 
my spare drill bag. So I've cut this little sticker off the bag that contained all the drills. And I'm just going to use that to label this little pouch. I got a bag of about 10 of these little pouch things for a very small amount of money on Amazon. They're really useful for things like this. So I'm just gonna sellotape that on. Okay. Now, I'm going to label the pots for these colours and then I'm going to go through and stick all the other labels in DMC order onto my bigger storage pots. So what have we got? 3861. Oh, that's the last one. Four five two. The great thing about Diamond Art Club sticky labels is that they are sticky enough to more or less stay on the pots, but they're not so sticky that they're hard to get off at the end of the painting. So generally speaking, I can just stick them straight on my pots and I don't need to worry about putting some washi tape underneath to avoid fighting with a load of sticky residue, which I really appreciate because I, I hate that. <laughs> it's fiddly. Okay. So there are my four pots for my biggest colours. And now I'm going to go through and do all of the rest. Okay, I'm going to kick off with my bigger colours. I don't think I'm going to fit all of these even in the big pot. Um, let's get these started. These big pots, I think I will fit at least a couple in. Um, these big pots came from AliExpress. They were about £8 for 10 I think. And they have been, oh my goodness, I'm not even going to fit two full bags in there. Um, these were a really good buy because they fill, they take so much. I mean, these, these are quite full and heavy. So don't be misled by the fact only one will go in there completely. Because if you look at the comparison, these do take quite a lot of drills, but these are humongous. So they're really good for kind of supplementing your other kits like this if you're like me and you like to have just one one layer of pots in your storage pot now do i put another one in do you know what? i don't think it's really worth it is it because i'm not gonna quite fit another pack in so i'm just gonna put those in the spare drill bag Next up, 3854. If you're wondering what this tray is, I just like to do this kind of thing over a tray so that any spillages are contained a bit better. And then I can just use the tray to pour whatever I've spilled directly into the pot because I can guarantee at some point I will <laughs> spill some drills because I always do. I'm amazed that they have got so many drills in these bags that these ginormous pots are not taking them all.
you can't see because it's out of camera, but I've got a big bowl to the side there for um, the rubbish. So I'm just collecting all of that up together. The one downside to diamond painting as a hobby is that it does generate an awful lot of plastic. I wish there was a better way for them to package all of these little drills. There we are, starting to throw drills all around the table, just like I said I would. <laughs> okay, so that's those ones. Um, they will be... Oh, I've missed one there. They will be tucked away in the sort of mesh pouch at the top of that storage box so they'll be easy to access so now I am literally just gonna take these in turn find them here because I've got them in DMC order so it shouldn't be too hard and fill them up and particularly with these bigger ones I'm quite likely to find for some of them that I can't fit the whole amount into the little drill pot with this one if I can. Eh, no. So, where that is the case, what I will be doing is getting a little baggie and label and storing it like that in with the spare drills. Three, two, one, and I'll just put DAC because ultimately this bag might be used once I've de-kitted um, and I'm keeping any spare drills so it's useful to have that on there. So I'm just going to fold that up, pop it in there like that. And there we go. Now this bag is going to get so full, I may actually use a separate bag for the, the ones that are like this, just to keep them a bit segmented out. Right, 814. This one definitely feels too full to go in. in that bag can you see it didn't affect me pouring them in so I don't need to get the dryer sheets out just yet <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about if you have static in your drills if you find that they're sort of jumping around and you can't control them and can't pull them it's usually static from the plastic packaging um, and what you can do is get a little square of a tumble dryer sheet put it in the pot with them or the bag with them Shake it all around and it does wonders to get rid of the static. But I think I can just about manage without there. It's quite daunting <laughs> how many spare drills I'm going to have that don't fit in here going to be a bit fiddly every time I need to fill them up again. Anyway, so who else has this kit in their stash? I know as I was saying earlier that it's in, it was incredibly popular, sold out really quickly. That's got a stowaway drill from whatever I last worked on in these. So yeah, it sold out really quickly and I've seen a lot of people in search of the painting on um, various de-stash sites. Ooh. Which I always feel really bad because 
When it sells that quickly, a lot of people just have no chance to get at it. And I know that Diamond Art Club has put a lot of work into increasing the amount of stock that they're able to get. So they probably bought in thousands and thousands and maybe just slightly underestimated how popular the kit was going to be because I, I believe that they're putting in their orders for production at least six months in advance of when we actually get the kits available for purchase. And so you can imagine quite a lot could change in terms of popularity of the business, popularity of, of different designs, and it must be hard for them to accurately predict what will be most popular. So even though they had probably had thousands of these, it sold out in minutes and a lot of people were left really disappointed, which is a shame. But it wasn't a limited edition kit, which means it will be back on a restock. Just takes a little bit of time. I've seen one or two completed uh, family circus paintings in the Diamond Art Club VIP Facebook group, which if you're not a member of, if you have ever purchased a painting directly from Diamond Art Club, you can join that Facebook group and it's a really nice big community, lots of people being helpful, sharing tips, you can learn more about upcoming sales, um, things like that. Um, so that's well worth joining. You do have to make sure that your email name and your Facebook name match up or they won't let you in. But anyway, so I've, I've seen a few completed paintings and works in progress on there and it looks fabulous. So really looking forward to working on it. That said, because it's a really big one, it's probably going to take me absolutely ages. <laughs> the last one I worked on that was this size, I started in, I think, July and finished in about February. That was Inspiration of Spring Meadows. And I would say um, it probably took about two months of actual work because I have several whips on the go. And I alternate between them so that I don't get bored. I didn't work on it solidly all that time, but it, two months is still quite a long time to spend on one painting. I think I'm gradually getting quicker and I'm getting better with multi places and all of that kind of thing that speeds me up a bit. And of course, it's not a race anyway. <laughs> there is no competition to see who can diamond paint the fastest. Um, but for me, it's more just impatience because I've got so many beautiful kits that I want to work on. So... If I'm working on the same one for a long time and it gets a bit samey, I just get antsy. <laughs> Want to get a new one out. Oh. Well, so far, I think every single colour <laughs> has been left over trails. <laughs> these big ones um they often say on the website how many are in there and i think this size is often in excess of a hundred thousand drills going to a painting of this size which is immense <laughs> one thing that i see a lot of people wondering about because a lot of companies, Diamond Art Club probably in particular, but a lot of companies really um, are going for very complicated, detailed designs. Um, and I personally love those designs, so I often end up buying a lot of the bigger paintings. And I see a lot of people wondering how best to work on them, because particularly if someone's used to just working flat on a painting, they're wondering, you know, how am I going to do this without creasing it? without damaging it? How am I going to reach all the parts? And there's lots of different things you can do. So a lot of people I see who work flat do just drape the paintings over the edge of the table. So they might uh, drape the side of the painting that they've worked on. Um, and with these poured glue canvases like Diamond Art Club have, they're quite forgiving. 
they're very flexible so you can generally get away with that and if any creases do get into the painting they will generally drop out um, when you put diamonds on so that's an option you can turn them around so you can work on them all different directions i often work on mine sideways in fact um, because i find it easier if i'm going to switch between paintings to work in a complete row um, of it in in that direction working on it sideways if it's a landscape style painting um, so that when I roll it up and put it up in in a box and that's done by the the shorter side of the painting um, I feel like it it rolls up better and I'm less likely to cause any damage compared to if I haven't quite completed a row and there's some parts of the row that have diamonds and some that don't it kind of adds a bit more tension into it and it doesn't roll quite as well so yeah I often work on them sideways I've worked on them upside down and to be honest any direction is fine one thing that is quite helpful is to turn your drill container as well so make sure that the labels on your drills match the direction that you're working on um, because if they have similar drills, um, similar drills, I mean similar symbols, and you will often find that, that there'll be things like arrows, um, little triangles, that kind of thing, that can be in different directions for different colours. It is easy to get confused otherwise. So yeah, it, it can take a little bit of practice, but working on all directions helps. And then what I personally do, oh, so close to fitting them all. Uh, what I personally do is I work on an easel because I get a lot of neck and shoulder paint. I cannot work on them flat. I would have had to give up diamond painting on the first or second painting that I did if I didn't have an easel because it was absolutely destroying my neck. Um, so I work on them on an easel. I've got quite a large easel. Um, I work on them sideways, as I say, because that fits best with my easel and so that I can roll them up for storage more easily um, and what I do is I start on one end I work on that and then when I get enough that it will no longer fit neatly on the easel I start to roll it up around a foam roller um, so I have some thin foam rollers that I got with uh, Dreamer Design paintings actually come that way so I tend to use theirs they roll their paintings around a foam roller very tightly. Um, so I use that quite often and then some little clips. If you don't have any paintings from there or from anyone else that sends their paintings that way, um, a lot of people use pool noodles, so they might be a bit big and bulky. So you can do that and that way you can just keep the painting rolled up neatly out of your way. And that way I, I can fit any size painting really. Um, if it's a very big painting and it's very wide, it might take a little more adjustment. Like I might have to move my overhead light that I use from one side of the easel to the other a bit more. But nothing too problematic. So that is my top tip for handling bigger paintings. It's just to not be scared of doing it any different direction. Roll it up, work on it upside down, work on it sideways do whatever you need to do if you've got a painting from a good quality company um it definitely works for diamond art club but certainly not only then most of the good company paintings that do poured glue canvases you'll be able to get away with doing the same things just don't be scared to to handle it however you need to basically If you have a painting that is on double-sided adhesive, and you'll know if you've got a double-sided adhesive painting because it will probably have an opaque cover. Oh, is that just about gonna fit? Yes. Um, it will have an opaque cover. And when you work on the canvas, you'll probably find there's less give to the glue. So if you stick something down, it probably won't budge. Whereas with poured glue, there's often a bit more flexibility. Like if you put your, your drill down and it's a bit wonky, you can often use your pen to kind of nudge it into place still. So with a diamond, 
diamond, double-sided adhesive painting, you do have to be more careful. If you roll those and bend those and do all the things that I've just talked about doing to manage a large pour glue painting, you can cause rivers which are creases in the glue. Well, not creases so much as air bubbles. I think I can... Ah, can I just get them in? I'm being lazy now. I don't want to start to bag you if I can get away with it. So it's like the world's fullest drill pot. Um, which I will regret whenever I have to pour drills in or out of it. Yeah, so you, you do have to be more careful with double-sided adhesive, which is one of the reasons that I and a lot of people do really prefer poured glue. It's just so much more forgiving to work with. I have a few double-sided adhesive canvases um, that I've bought at different stages of my diamond painting journey. Um, the biggest one that I have is a 70 by 50 centimetre one and that is quite tricky to manage on my easel without bending it too much and, and risking more rivers so I certainly wouldn't go any bigger for my easel. And that would be a barrier to getting a lot of designs that I like that really need to be big to get all the detail you want. So yeah, I do have quite a strong preference having worked on both for poured glue. I mean, I don't mind working on double-sided adhesive. It's, it's fine for actually working on it. It's just all the other stuff about managing your canvas and making sure you don't damage it. And having to use a, a little craft knife to cut air bubbles if you've got them so that your drills lie flat and it, it just gets to be a bit of a hassle. But lots of people prefer double-sided adhesive, so it's all good if that is the case for you. Wouldn't life be boring if we all like the same things, as I always say to my son. Right, I've used up all those bags, so I need to get some new ones out. I think I need to buy some more of these soon. Do you get little baggies with lots of paintings? I mean, Dumb Dark Club sends them, as you saw. I find that the baggies that they send are very flimsy and the little bit at the top that's, you know, that bit where you pull apart and join it and it's supposed to sort of zip into itself that can feel really flimsy like it's going to break and also like it's quite hard to seal up. So I personally prefer these, which I found on Amazon, and I can get about 200 for five or six pounds. So they don't cost much and they just make the process a lot easier. Can't believe. <laughs> How many of these colours aren't fitting into one pot? I suppose I haven't got to any of the smaller ones yet. Um, it does make me wonder if I chose the right storage system for this painting. But it doesn't matter. And I guess I probably wasn't going to get anything that was going to fit them all. Um, I've got Elizabeth Ward style containers that I use for some of my paintings. But I wouldn't fit everything into one tray of those so that wouldn't particularly help me because in my workspace I just don't have room to lay out two trays of drills. So I think I have maybe a week, maybe a little bit less of my current square painting that I want to finish before I start this. So I'm pushing on with that to get that done. And then I will start this one. But I also have a Dreamer Designs canvas that's on the go, which I did unbox on this channel recently. Um, I've done one row of that so far and it is 
absolutely beautiful. It's got the most vibrant, lovely colours. There's all these different shades of green because it's a, it's a, a picture of a lovely outside garden um, type area with a little cottage. Um, so it's really beautiful, but oh my goodness, the confetti in it. So confetti is where you have a lot of different drill colours in a small space, as opposed to colour blocking, where you might just have one block of, a, a big block of one colour. And some people have a real preference for confetti, some people have a real preference for colour blocking. A lot of people, I think, are like me and like something in between, so I like paintings that have a good mixture. I definitely get really bored if I have too much colour blocking for my taste and I wouldn't buy a painting that had just a big background of colour blocking because I know I wouldn't enjoy it but equally if there's a lot of confetti I just find I burn out a little bit because it takes okay so I've got just a normal tumble dryer sheet I've cut a little square off it I'm going to pop that in here I'm going to try and get these other ones to go in from the tray. And because of the static, they are sticking. There we are. And I'm going to shake that around. And as you can hopefully see, they are now lying a lot better in the pot. They're not trying to stick up the sides. So yes, I have Zoom Zoom to do, which is a draggling painting and looks like a lot of fun. But I also, this year, want to take part in the Summer with the Masters event. So within the diamond painting community, there are quite often events running, uh, which is where there's a particular theme. Some of the events might have prizes and things, but quite often it's just, you know, to bring people together, chatting, um, doing a similar style of painting. Summer with the Masters is run by, I think, Diamonds and Washi on YouTube and Tiny Worlds of Wonder on YouTube. So those are two really great channels to check out if you haven't come across them already. Um, and it's a event that looks at older paintings. So um, those are both creators who really strongly believe in only working on licensed art. And what I mean by that is paintings where the company that makes the painting has made a deal with the artist to use their work. So they have their permission and also they are compensating the artist for the use of their work. The artist is making money when people buy that painting, which is really, you know, as it should be. Um, but Summer with the Masters is about the fact that paintings... So paintings that were made prior to... I don't know, I don't think it's exactly 100 years, some point in the 1920s would be exempt from needing a licence because they're older. It means that they're in the public domain and you don't need to compensate the artist for that work. So the Summer with the Masters event uses older paintings, often quite classic paintings. And it means if you've got a painting that you really like that is made before that date some point in the 1920s you could send that off to a diamond painting company to make a custom for you and you wouldn't be uh, breaching any licensing considerations so i have um, the painting wheat fields by uh, vincent van gogh which i bought from diamond dots Right near the start of my diamond painting journey that is a company that actually does do license work license artwork generally anyway and they have really nice quality paintings and they're very easily accessible um, they're actually the only company that i know of that you can buy in an in-person shop in the uk because you can buy them in um hobbycraft sorry i had to think because i always confuse hobbycraft in the uk and hobby lobby in america because i so often see people mentioning it in diamond painting groups anyway i digress um so i bought that painting there probably about a year ago and i haven't worked on it yet and that is a round painting 
So I may actually kit that up as my next round painting because then I can do that in June when the summer with the Masters event starts. So you see, I have a plan. <laughs> I've only ever done one diamond painting event before, which was a Draglings and Books one last year, last July that I did um, a Randall Spangler Draglings painting for. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to join in another. So yeah, pretty soon you will see kitting up videos on my channel for one or both of those two paintings, depending on what I decide to do and how much I get done in May, because May is looking to be quite a busy month for me. We've got um, one family break away for a few days with my husband's family. Well, my husband's parents, we're going to Centre Parks. Um, I don't know how widely known Centre Parks is outside of the UK and Europe. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, Centre Parks is a holiday where you go and you pay for a lodge type thing to stay in. And then you can go use their swimming pools, which are really big and fun and have slides and that kind of thing without paying any more. You can also pay an absolute fortune <laughs> to do various other activities. So they're very sporty and outdoorsy. So, you know, you can do tennis, you can do football, you can do badminton, you can do orienteering, you can do uh, boating, you can do, well, you name it, you can do it there really. They're really good places to go expensive for a weekend because if you're like me and you have a young child who doesn't particularly care about money um he wants to do everything and we hardly ever go in fact this is a holiday that was booked before the pandemic and we haven't managed to go yet because it's been cancelled a few times because of well not being able to go because of the pandemic um so we want to make the most of it so we're just you know we've put a bit of money aside for allowing him to do all the things he wants to do while we're there so that's a long weekend and then at the end of the month I've got my parents and one of my nephews coming to stay for the weekend so that will be fun so this is the nephew that is the closest in age to my son he's about two and a half years older and they get on really well so he's going to come up with my parents and I imagine that will be another fun activity filled weekend. And it will also be half term at the end of the month. Um, half term, again, for any non-UK people. Our school year is divided up into three main terms or six half terms, depending on how you look at it. Um, and so we have Christmas holidays, Easter holidays and summer holidays, which are all a bit longer, either two weeks or six weeks. Um, and then in the middle of each longer term, there's one week off just to break it up. So half term will be that one week off in the middle of the summer term. So I'll have my son around for a week then and won't be able to do as much. We also, during half term, have two bank holidays because we normally have a bank holiday at the end of May. A bank holiday is just a day off, basically. I think it's called a bank holiday because, you know, when these were set up, it was a day when the banks were closed and it was an extra day off work for most people. Um, and we have eight of those a year, you know, normally times like Christmas and Easter, but a couple of more random ones that I'm not entirely sure why we have them, but they're nice. <laughs> so normally we have one on the last Monday in May as well as the first Monday in May. We've just had the first Monday one. This year, we don't have the last one, but later that same week, we have an extra bank holiday and that one. <laughs> so I'll explain this really badly. So normally the last Monday in May would be a bank holiday. Um, and this year, that bank holiday is shifting to, let's say, the Friday of that week, and we get an extra one on the Thursday. And the reason for that is the Queen's Jubilee celebrations. 
So Queen Elizabeth II has been queen for, I believe it's, do you know, I don't actually know how long. It must be 70 years or something crazy like that. She's like the longest reigning monarch at this point. Um, so we get an extra bank holiday to celebrate. So yeah, that's all coming up. So it's going to be a bit busy this month which may also affect when I'm able to put videos up, which may also affect when I kit things up anyway. Because if my son is at home, I don't like to film videos. Which is partly just because he needs entertaining. He's only eight. Um, but it's also because, like many children, he has lofty ambitions for when he grows up. And his two current ambitions are <laughs> to be a professional footballer. And he's very good at football, to be fair. <laughs> football uh, in the UK is what I believe you call soccer over in America. I'm sort of trying to translate as I go because um, I know from my viewer stats that quite a few people who watch these videos are from the US. Um, so he wants to either be a professional footballer or... <laughs> A YouTuber. <laughs> um, and as we all know, there are people who make a lot of money on YouTube. They're few and far between. It's not really a safe career plan. Um, and who knows if YouTube will even be a big thing by the time he grows up. I mean, the pace of change um, in technology and social media oh, God, within my lifetime has been huge. So who even knows? But yeah, I'm doing this channel just as a bit of fun um, to accompany the hobby that I really enjoy. I enjoy watching these videos myself um, and I thought it would be fun to create them and to show the things I work on. And I certainly hope that this channel grows and I'm able to bring more content and that people enjoy what I do and, and will want to subscribe to this channel. So, by the way, <laughs> if you're watching this and enjoying it, please consider liking and liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Um, but I'm not under any illusions that, you know, <laughs> I'm ever probably going to make any money from the channel, let alone make a living from it. So because he's eight... <laughs> I just, I prefer that he doesn't even know I'm, I'm doing this, to be honest, because I feel like he will get the wrong end of the stick and think that I'm going to be some famous YouTuber. <laughs> uh, yeah, that just doesn't seem like a good idea. So I won't film if he's in the house. He's actually been in the house a week because he's been off school sick with very mysterious collection of symptoms some of which we weren't entirely sure if they were genuine which I hate to say but he does have a tendency to prefer to stay home if he thinks he can and if you ask him if something hurts it won't just hurt a little bit it will hurt a lot it will be awful it will be like it's broken you know what it's like with eight-year-olds. He's, he's, he's not meaning to fib. He's just, he tends to over-dramatise things a little bit. So, he's been here all week because yeah, we couldn't really work out what was wrong. And there were some very genuine things going on. Um, but there were also some things that we weren't sure. And it's been, it's been been a bit of a week trying to work out what's going on with him and he probably could have been in school for some of it but if the pandemic has taught me anything it's taught me that we shouldn't normalize going to work and school if you're suffering and whilst I never want him to get the impression that it's okay to just stay home um, because obviously you have commitments as a grown-up you have work as a child you have school um so I don't want him to think that it's no big deal to stay home. But equally, if there's a chance that he genuinely is suffering, I don't want to send him into school. He's only eight. He's only little. And I know a lot of schools and their attendance targets would disagree with me. Um, but there's plenty of time later in life when no doubt he will be under a lot more pressure to attend things. 
so he's been off but today he did go back in and it's nice to have a little bit of peace in the house shaking some static out of that one Okay, getting towards the end now. Oh, <laughs> I was dropping the lid. Although I think I largely have the smaller bags left, so it might be a bit deceptive when I look at the pile as to how many are left. But we are getting there. Three, seven, five, five. I haven't been paying very much attention to the actual diamonds to see how many of these are the new drills because as I mentioned before, Diamond Art Club have been transitioning and for several months you'd find that um, you'd have a mixture. So as I said before, um, the old drills used to have a mixture of drills with nine facets and 13 facets, like this pack here. You can probably just about see there's a mixture in there. And with the newer drills, they're all 13 facets and they're very regular. And I'm looking forward to working on a kit and I don't know if it's gonna be this one, given that I've just spotted some with nine facets. But I'm looking forward to working on a kit that's all new drills because um, what has happened is with the older drills, because they were slightly more irregular, the grid was a certain size to accommodate that without them popping off. Because if you have the drills too close together, you will get them popping off, not staying on your canvas. With canvases where they've only got newer drills, because the drills are so much more consistent, that's not necessary. You don't need that extra little bit of space. So what Diamond Art Club have done for kits like that is just ever so slightly tighten up the drill field. So if you were to measure your canvas, rather than it being exactly true to size, so a 70 by 93 centimetre painting measuring exactly 70 by 93 centimetres, it might be say 69 by 92 or something like that. And that slightly tighter drill field just means there's less chance that you'll get gapping between drills. And I have to say, I did think with this one being such a recent release that I would have that with this one. It's a little bit of a shame, but I guess it just depends what colours are in there. And if it's a colour they don't use very often, I suppose they still have stock of the older kind of drills in it. And it doesn't matter at all, really. Um, but I'm currently working on one that does have a mixture. And I just find it a little bit annoying, um, just because I'm quite particular about how my drills sit. I just find it's, it's slightly harder to avoid gapping. Um, when you've got newer drills on a canvas that is still sized for older drills because they fit together so, so neatly, but then you end up with a gap. Um, what am I looking for? 3814. I can't see this one for looking. Oh. Hmm. That's not very good, is it? What have I done there? Right, so I'm going to put that to the side and at the end, I assume, I will have a colour. <laughs> they don't look right. I don't know why I put pale blue in a turquoisey green pot. So I'm going to see and hopefully there will be a bag that's pale blue. I mean a pot that looks pale blue. And I can work out what I've done wrong. Silly of me. I don't think I've ever actually done that before. But then, I'm not a 
historically I haven't generally been chatting away while I've been uh, kitting up so mistakes will happen and I'm sure it will be easy to figure out at the end and if not I'll just ask for some help probably on the Diamond Art Club VIP group to figure out where I went wrong Ooh, just about gonna fit So yeah, I'm really looking forward to working on this one. I have to say, the colours are just so joyful. Are you like me? Do you really like a variety of colours? Like, I love kits that have lots and lots of colours um, and a big variety of colours. And there's kits that I haven't bought where I really like the design but there's not that many different colours and I just know I'll get so bored I don't know what it is about me I get bored easily and need to mix things up and that's why I switch between different whips but it's also helpful within a canvas you know I find I kind of almost look forward to working with a certain colour maybe that's just me being a bit odd I've just spotted in my drill pots. I bet that that's what I've done because that's 3841 and that's 3814 and that looks like a pale blue. That's going to be it, isn't it? Well, I'll leave that to the end just to make sure. I'm glad I don't have too much more because it's getting towards school pickup time. I'm going to have to go pick up my son. And it's a lovely sunny day here, so I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to stop off at the park on his way home with some of his friends. Nine oh seven. I like these bright limey green colours. Can you see that? It's nice, isn't it? Matches my tray, in fact. Eight one nine. There was another painting by this same artist in uh, the recent anniversary releases by Diamond Art Club. So um, they've recently celebrated four years since they had their first order or something like that. Anyway, they released 50 new canvases. And I think there were a few more that came along in the end. But they said in advance there'd be 50 new canvases for the main release. And there was another one by this artist, Richard Lorenz, with owls. Um, and that one sold out really quickly I think it sold out quite quickly on the early release for customers in highest tiers so like a lot of companies do there's a rewards program with Diamond Art Club and one of the perks of reaching a higher level in the rewards program is that for a lot of new releases you get um like an early shopping window where you can buy them and not everyone else can um so it sold out within about 15 minutes, I think, in that. And then the next day, when they were general release, and I guess there were a lot of people who hadn't managed to buy it in the early release, and there was also, you know, everyone else who was a fan of Diamond Art Club and the painting wanting to buy it. It sold out. I mean, <laughs> if it was there for like two, three minutes, then, you know, I'm surprised. I think it was even quicker than that. Which is a shame for people who were disappointed. I actually did not buy that one because I didn't like it quite as much as this one. And I knew I probably wasn't going to want to work on another one that was so similar in style to this one. And also because I find that, well, one of the things I find a little frustrating, 
Ooh, last colour, is that I am drawn to paintings which are big and detailed. So this isn't a fault of the diamond painting companies, but what that means is for those paintings to be done well, which I would absolutely prefer rather than it being made too small, they end up being huge. <laughs> so for the uh, anniversary releases, I told myself I wasn't even going to look at the really big ones because I just I had too many of them. It's, yeah, can't be doing it. Right, so this has to be this, but I am just, to reassure myself, going to find... Yeah, see, I even wrote free 841 on the bag and I put it in free 814. So that was easy enough to sort out. What am I doing? I was going to tip them in. What is the point? <laughs> I've just changed the lid. <laughs> I've been doing this too long. I've frazzled my brain. Okay. all done that doesn't feel like it took too long in the end so i'm going to tidy up a little bit and then just show you how they all look in the containers because i think it's really fun looking down when they've just been filled and you can see all the colors and really get a sense of the array of colors that you're going to get in a particular painting so they are with these ones on top as well so yeah lots of really super bright fun colors a lot of browns and peachy neutral colors as well um but they are going to be all in that background around the side i think and then you're going to have the bright colorful bits for the lovely little birds and the circus signs and oh it's going to be fun and I don't think I've ever worked on a painting with as many as five ABs before. And they've been labelled correctly. You've got one for one, two for two, three for three, four for four, five for five. Then we've skipped it for a couple and then we've got eight for eight. Oh, no. <laughs> Twelve is seven. I'm really not sure why that often happens. It drives me mad. But of course, it doesn't actually matter that you have them in this order. People order them however they want. So, oh, and here we've got a nine. Anyway, I am now waffling. <laughs> I'm in need of a drink of water because my throat is parched from talking so much. And I'm going to tidy up. And then I think, do you know what? I think I might go do some diamond painting. <laughs> Crack on with uh, Island Time. Get it ready so I can actually start this beauty. Okay. Well, I hope very much that you've enjoyed this video. It's been nice having your company. Um, and if you did enjoy the video, please do consider adding a like. And please do consider subscribing to my channel. It's still a new channel. I'm trying to put out content roughly every week, every two weeks. Um, and it will really help me to grow the channel and, and see that I'm on the right tracks and putting out things that people want to see. If you can show your support in that way. So thank you very much for joining me and have a great day.